Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am still trying to switch things up and film in different places now that I have lighting that I can move around. So let me know what you think of this setup opposite side of the bed normally I sit over there facing the window obviously so let me know what you think today's video is my faves and fails for the month of July so I'm going to start with two fails one of which is my phone screen so I have an iPhone 5 I think 5 5s and I dropped it the other day and the screen broke just at the bottom it, it almost looked like a bow so it had like a crack there and then cracks radiating this way and cracks radiating that way and it was right at the bottom and everything still worked fine and it didn't really bother me too much but Grant kept saying we need to get your phone screen fixed so I kind of I had in my mind like I need to get my phone screen fixed not really because I wanted it done but because he was saying like I needed to get it done which is like so dumb but I just didn't really think about it so I went into a computer and phone repair shop in the town near us and they didn't have any screens so they gave me a card for a place in Inglewood and they said give them a call and see if they have a screen and then you can take it through to there. Now Inglewood is about 45 minutes away so I just kind of kept the card and didn't get around to it. And then we were in New Plymouth for something on a Saturday and I know that the place that I've had my phone screen repaired there before is not open on a Saturday. So I didn't really think about getting it done while we were in New Plymouth. But then we were in the mall and I came down some escalators. We had some time to kill. And as I came down these escalators, I saw this brand new like corner shop with a big Apple logo and like a spanner. Like their logo is like the Apple with a spanner in and it's called uh, Fast Fix or something. So I thought, oh, they fix phones. So I went in there and asked them, you know could you fix my phone screen how much will it cost i think it was about 80 dollars now i've had a phone screen fixed before by a different place in new plymouth and i think it was like 120 dollars and he said he could do it straight away so because i had grant's little voice in my head going we need to get your screen fixed i was like yeah let's just get this done so they put a new screen on and like while i waited it took like 10 minutes and then i turned on my phone and there was like a yellow spot like towards the top and I was like what is this so they were like oh sorry maybe there's a screw too tight so they took the screen off and fixed it and gave it back to me and I absolutely hate it like I'm so mad at myself because as they like started fixing my screen like as I was like oh yeah go ahead and I gave them my phone and kind of wandered off in my head I was like I should have asked if it's a genuine Apple screen or not but I just left it and I'm so mad at myself, I wish I'd asked them because it is not a genuine Apple screen. It is so horrible, it is less responsive. Like, if I'm like trying to swipe up my, okay, you need to get reflection, my bottom screen, I go like this. It doesn't always come. Sometimes I have to swipe, swipe, it's so annoying. And it's much darker and it's got like a bluish tint. So I have to turn my brightness up and that obviously takes more battery power so my battery's running down faster and I absolutely hate it so that's a massive fail I wish I'd never got it done it wasn't even bothering me I would rather have the cracked broken screen than this screen so don't go to that place in the mall in New Plymouth and get your iPhone fixed like if you need a new screen because it's crap like I'm so mad at myself and I paid $80 to have a phone screen that I'm mad at like I'm, I was less mad at the one that was broken the other fail from July was rice cakes. Now, I haven't eaten rice cakes in ages. I've got some here. I mean, you all know what rice cakes are, right? It's these, like, pretty much like polystyrene, but they're made out of rice. These doodads. I haven't had them in ages, but Daniel is now gluten-free. He was having some gastric distress. Let's just leave it at that. And I said to him, you really need to go gluten-free because ages ago when he'd gone for like a routine doctor's appointment and you know they weigh you and measure you and take your blood pressure when the nurse practitioner was taking his blood pressure she noticed he had tiny little bumps on his arms and she said oh that's usually a sign of gluten sensitivity so i said to him if you're sensitive to gluten you're better cutting it out before it turns into like an allergy or an intolerance like 
get ahead of it but he wasn't interested at all so anyway he had these stomach issues and i said to him you really need to try cutting out gluten and because he was so uncomfortable he said yeah i'll give that a go so he's gluten free now that, wow that's a long story daniel's medical history to say that i bought rice cakes and because they were in the house i was eating rice cakes and i kind of took a couple of days to put two and two together that the rice cakes were causing me some gastric distress we'll leave it at that not going to go into symptoms but i had a very unhappy stomach and i don't know why because i can eat sushi i can eat risotto i can eat you know regular rice i can eat rice porridge i can eat rice crackers not a problem but rice cakes which literally just has rice and i think salt in there's nothing else in them i did not get on with them so that was a massive fail and i won't be eating those again Okay, moving on to favorites. I don't have a whole lot. I'm not going to pad out my favorites with things that I wasn't taking note that I was really enjoying. So I just have a few things to share. First one being finally starting to paint the house. It is so beautiful. I just love it so much. I'll link the vlog over here if you haven't seen it where we began painting the house. Finally, it's all I wanted to do from the minute we bought the house three years ago was get rid of that yellow and the weird blue stripes on the doors and windows. Like why? Anyway, I'm so happy to finally be doing that. I kind of want to push through but as a few of you pointed out in the comments on that vlog, winter is not the time to be painting a house. Why don't I wait for spring? I didn't wait for spring partly because I just couldn't wait and partly because there was some damage to the house where the paint had chipped and the bare wood was exposed and it was eroding quite quickly and I was just kind of wanting to get it done, to get it kind of patched and sealed and painted before it got any worse. Now, I know a couple months is not going to make much difference, but like i said i just couldn't wait and i just wanted to get stuck in i know it's going to take a long time a lot of hours to paint the whole entire house and in spring i'm generally super super busy with gardening i spend a lot of time gardening really intensely in spring a lot of hours in my greenhouse and i kind of didn't want to have to juggle the house painting and the gardening i'm still going to have to obviously i have plenty more house to paint but I just wanted to get a head start anyway i'm really enjoying the bits that have been painted and i can't wait to get the rest done my next favorite are these wireless headphones i shared them in a vlog when i bought them they are skull candy inked i'll link the exact product down below i looked at a few and i chose these in the end because they had good reviews the price wasn't too bad compared to some of them i think these were 89 dollars which is still i think ridiculously priced but like i said they were cheaper than some of the other good quality ones out there so it has this very very lightweight band that just rests there i really didn't want some like this i just wanted some that went in your ears but like i said i looked at what was available and the prices and the reviews and in the end decided on this one and i really don't even feel this like i get bothered by things very quickly i'm sensitive to how clothes feel and having hair on my neck and face one of the reasons i have short hair so i really thought i was going to be bothered by this but it doesn't bother me it bothers me way less than the cords on my old earphones which were not bluetooth anyway then you have these doodads which go in your ears obviously they have um like a rubber tip and it has two different sizes of rubber tip for your ears to obviously find the one that fits you the best it has a little port there that you can charge them the charge lasts quite long like i was quite impressed with how long they last before the battery goes flat and then it has the controls here excuse the paint on it clearly you can see people kept coming to me and talking to me while i was painting and i had paint on my hands and i had to pause my podcast and got paint on it anyway so you can just press the middle to pause volume up volume down you can take calls on it as well and they've just worked really well they've done what i wanted them to do and that's been a favorite i've used them a lot so i highly recommend these and that is all i have to say about those moving into the kitchen for my next favorites my favorite was actually from the previous month which was a meal kit swap video that i did with two other youtubers who live fairly nearby and that was so much fun but what that's actually done is taken me right out of the rut i was in with regards to cooking 
it's really just lit a fire under me, reignited my interest in cooking and my interest in trying different recipes. So not only was it fun to do and I got some new recipes from doing it. I will link the video over here so you can go and check it out. But it's kind of just reinvigorated me in the kitchen. So I have tried a few new recipes and really enjoyed them and have added them into rotation. One of them is for paleo chocolate ice cream but I don't have an ice cream machine and I don't want to have to freeze it and take it out and beat it and freeze it and take it out and beat it and if you don't do that and you freeze an ice cream mixture it doesn't have a great texture and it gets ice crystals in it so what I did is I used the recipe to make chocolate ice blocks as they're called in New Zealand or popsicles I got a popsicle mold from the op shop and I just pour it into there and after about an hour I go and stick wooden spoons in and finish freezing it. Grant and I have actually found that it's fine just frozen in little pots. It's less hassle, it's easier to do and if you just let it soften a bit before eating it then it's it doesn't have that horrible kind of ice crystal texture but you can also use the exact same mixture and just pour it into little pots and put them in the fridge and it makes like a chocolate pudding or like a chocolate mousse kind of a texture so that's been a good recipe it's quick it's easy it uses pantry staples i will link everything down below i also made coconut mango popsicles i didn't really follow a set recipe it was basically a can of coconut cream a whole bunch of frozen mango i poured in some maple syrup i whizzed it up in the food processor and then i froze that and that also slightly defrosted so it goes really creamy we've really been enjoying that Another recipe that we enjoyed was creamy sun-dried tomato chicken. I don't usually cook with sun-dried tomato, so it was really enjoyable to have just a, a different flavor in our food than, you know, the staple ingredients that I'm always cooking with. So that was a keeper. I also did a balsamic roasted chicken dish. So you kind of marinate the chicken thighs in this balsamic marinade or dressing and then you roast it with Brussels sprouts and red onion and that was really delicious as well. And then a favorite that I've made a few times is paleo pumpkin hummus. So I can't eat chickpeas but I made this hummus from this recipe which uses cashew nuts which you soak and then pumpkin and I had pumpkin puree in the freezer so I could just use that. It's got tahini in and then spices. It was so delicious. Like Grant doesn't even like hummus, but as you would have seen in a recent vlog, he was eating the hummus like practically out of my mouth. I was eating it for breakfast. I would step away from it and he would be like in there eating it. It was so delicious. We've really been enjoying that as well. And then staying in the kitchen for this favorite, it is this lidded roasting dish. Hang on, the lid's in there. This is a metal or like enamel roasting dish. It was $15 at the warehouse, so inexpensive. It's really big, you can see like next to my head. Um, I bought this because Grant asked me to get one for him to put meat in when we barbecue. So he can take the packs of meat out there, barbecue the meat, and then he wanted a dish that was unbreakable that he could have outside and just put the meat in, that he could put the lid on so that what's already been done can kind of stay warm and the flies can stay off it. So this was just perfect, $15 like I said, really inexpensive. But I found that I've been reaching for it as well. I've really enjoyed making oven meals in it, like I mentioned the balsamic chicken, the sun-dried tomato chicken. Normally I would do that in like a glass baking dish, but there's just something about using this dish that gives such a nice texture to the sauce and it really kind of, I just feel like it roasts it from underneath better than a glass dish would. I've made a curry in it in the oven, Curries, yeah, you can do them in the crock pot, but I feel like the flavors are, it has a better like roasted flavor and more intense flavor and the spices just taste better if it's done either slow cooked on the stove or in the ovens. So really been enjoying this dish. It's been quite versatile and we've got a lot of use out of it and you just can't beat the price. If you want to see inside, it just, it has two handles, which is convenient. And then it's just like that inside. So that's a win. Another couple of fails I should have mentioned was our internet in July. We just had appalling internet problems, but I've gone on about that at length. So I'm not going to go into that again. It's actually fixed now. We were just about to switch providers and they finally fixed it. So I don't know. We'll, I guess, stay with them for now. Another fail was not having a surge protector on my computer like I thought I did and having my computer hard drive 
kind of have issues after we had a power cut but also that's fixed now so i will talk about a computer fave rather than fails and that is a firefox extension now we use firefox as our browser and you can get different add-ons and extensions just like you can with any browser i just prefer firefox it's more stable i like the features i like the way it works anyway so i was getting frustrated with facebook i kind of hate facebook anyway but i'm on facebook mainly for my vlog channel page and then my moving to new zealand facebook group and then i'm in a couple of groups and some of the groups are quite large and one of them's a photography group it's the bite shot i mentioned the bite shot youtube channel recently in the faves i'll link that over here Anyway, I've joined the Facebook group and you can share food photography pictures and stuff on there. And when you share a photo in a large group, you'll often get a lot of likes. And also just in my Moving to New Zealand Facebook group, I would like make a post and people would like it to acknowledge that they've read it. And it just frustrated me that on my little notifications, you know, like on Facebook, it's got the little red notification, like, oh, there's, you know, 30 things that have happened you need to go and check them out and i'll click on the notifications to see like are there comments i need to reply to has somebody commented on the post or has somebody tagged me in something like notifications that i actually want to know about and need to do something about and i would just be like scrolling through so and so like this so and so like this so and so reacted to this and i just wasn't i'm not interested in that that's a waste of time for me it was frustrating me it was just cluttering up that notification thing so i found this extension for firefox called Facebook like hider I think I'll put in a screenshot here so you can see what it is and you add that to the browser and it hides your like so it doesn't actually change the number like if I get 30 notifications and five of those are comments and the rest are all likes it will still say 30 but when I click on that it just shows me the comments it doesn't show me any likes and that has been a game changer for me it's just saved me time it's saved me irritation and i highly recommend it i wish facebook had a setting where you can say what kind of activity on facebook you want to be notified about and what you don't like even in my feed i'm really not interested in people sharing things they've read or <laughs> commenting on other people's posts or liking things like i don't care anyway i kind of hate facebook so i'm not going to go into that but this add-on or extension or plugin or whatever it's called has just helped me to hate it a little bit less a tv show that we've been enjoying in the month of july is called brooklyn 99 we used to sit around the table and eat dinner together as a family but that kind of fell by the wayside a few years ago and now we enjoy watching a show together while we eat we're still having family time we're still talking to each other but that's just something we enjoy and that works for our family and brings us together at the end of the day and we had watched all the way through modern family we watched parks and recreation and we were looking for a show to watch together and we just couldn't really find something we were enjoying the good place but then of course that goes on to hiatus and we're waiting for the next season and then i think one of daniel's friends told him about brooklyn 99 so we started watching that and we've really been enjoying it it's a sitcom i think they're about 20 minutes long and the characters are funny brooklyn 99 is a police precinct and it's just the things that they get up to and you know you kind of get to know each personality in the group and we just enjoy it and it's funny and it's light-hearted it's not serious at all it doesn't have like bad language and sex and violence and things so that was a show that i would recommend that we discovered and enjoyed in july and then the last thing i'm going to mention is a youtube channel that i discovered and it is lucy wood she is a british youtuber and i'm not sure what her intention for her channel originally was but it's kind of become a channel where she shares outfit ideas and like fashion hauls and things for size 14 women so that's a uk or new zealand size 14 which i think is a us size so like she says you get all these beautiful curvy plus size women doing you know youtube channels and instagrams and whatever and you have all these slim skinny slender women doing youtube channels and hauls and trials but you don't really have much in the middle like size 14 i'm a size 14 and you there's not much to represent that like average girl size and so she had a really good response to one of her videos that she did i think it was how to survive summer when you're a bit fat and she explains what she means by that at the beginning like 
anyway i'm not going to go into that but that video really took off and she realized that there's a, a demand for this so she's showing outfits and she's showing get ready with me and she's showing hauls and she's showing like what to wear as a wedding guest or just different ideas like that and i've been enjoying her videos i really like her and her personality and her style of presenting and i feel like her videos are her videos are, are high quality and I would recommend them. Oh, she did one where she went and bought a size 14 pair of black skinny jeans from multiple high street stores and just showed how there is no one size 14. Like some she couldn't even get on and some were a bit loose in places and just how it fits differently. And I just find that relatable and interesting and I've enjoyed her channel. As always, everything linked down below, the recipes I mentioned, everything else. I hope you enjoyed this. I would love to know what you've been enjoying in the month of July. We are past the worst of winter now. End of July, come on, we only have one more month of winter left. August isn't too bad because spring things start happening and there's that feeling of growth in the air and you can just feel that the end of winter is in sight. So, glad July is behind us. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.